when I'm working through HVAC design calculations and kind of prepping my clients for what it might look like when we get there, one of the first questions that they often have is, should we have two systems or three systems or four systems? I don't know. I've got all these different advice pathways from different HVAC professionals. And the first thing that we should do is try and find out how big the total capacity for the entire house needs to be. And often what we find is that not only should we not have four systems because that's ridiculous, but three systems is actually probably too much because often with a high performance home, you're going to end up something like two and a half or even two tons and trying to split two tons into three parts isn't really going to work. So we're dealing with two different systems or even just one system and zones then become a conversation. So I want to show you like an interesting layout on an HVAC design calculation that I did uh, last week that turned out mwah, perfectly. And so here's what it looks like. This is the 3D model. And you can see that it's uh, pretty boxy. Like this is actually really beautiful. I think that one of the things about trying to do enclosure design and HVAC design is the simpler you can make the shape, the better. The one thing here is that we may end up having, because this is such a square shape, you can see that there are interior rooms that we might have uh, be loadless. They don't have any exposure to outside. And those are a topic of another video on this channel, which I'm, if I can remember what it is, I'm linking it on screen right now. Too many videos. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to show you real quick, this home is in Florida. And if we turn on the shadows, when the sun comes up, it shines on that side of the house, middle of the day, shining straight down. And then in the afternoon, it's going to shine in the west. So we've got two completely different load profiles. We have morning load and we have afternoon load. And that means that if we're going to zone, zoning front system and back system or bottom floor and upper floor doesn't make sense. Really, what we want to do is try and favor the east side and the west side if we possibly can. Here's what that looks like when we actually get into the design software. This is right soft that I'm using. So first of all, you can see all the rooms laid out here. Um, again, this is south. The rear uh, of the house faces south. The front door faces north. Now, what we can see here is that I've got the, an east system and a west system fitted into this house, and it looks like this. So floor one is like so, floor two is like so, and then the attic also is split up because of these skylights, which again, topic of another video if you're interested in uh, HVAC design, actually getting into the software. And first of all, you can see here, it peaks in the morning and then it goes down throughout the day. That's the east side. The west side is low in the morning and peaks up toward the afternoon. And by the way, what this graph always shows you with this AED graph is just about the windows. It's kind of discounting all the other loads in the house, the loads through the walls and through the roof and through the floor. And we're just honing in on the windows, which is only a part of the load, of course. But this will have a big effect on how those rooms feel. In both cases, we are not breaking outside this red line right here. And that is very important. Once you do break outside that, then we want to start definitely considering zoning. In both of these cases, we don't need any zoning here at all. So within these two different systems, we have an east side system and a west side system. And you see the closets that they're located in here. Mechanical room one, mechanical room two. Really, like when they came to me, they were thinking about doing this. They thought, oh, well, maybe we'll have a mechanical room here or a mechanical room here. And we ended up being like, whoa, check this out. First of all, we need to have one per side because east-west. But also the load of each of these sides, when I split them up, first time out, this was the most beautiful thing that happened. So the east side system has about 10,000 heating needed and about 14,000 of cooling needed. West side system, about 11,000 and about 15, 16,000 here. Uh, so that is like, bam, splitting it right down the middle. So now we have two completely identical systems left and right that we can put into this house. And the, the nightmare begins when you start having like a really much bigger system on one side of the house than the other. And then now we start getting into like, oh, well, what piece of equipment are we gonna put there? How exactly are we gonna route the ducts? And that's what uh, then happens after this step in the manual J process is the manual S and the manual T. So I hope that this is interesting to you guys. I just thought that this was a really beautiful way to kind of express how this east-west thing worked. If this was one system, we would want to zone it likewise east and west, same as what we're doing here. 
So uh, please do comment below if you have other things to ask about this particular aspect of this HVAC design process. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.